Agents Podcast. Okay, welcome back, Lab Coat Agents. We are going to do something we don't do often, which is take on epi- a second episode. I was going to say episode two. I guess we could call it that. With the same guest, and you all might remember episode 81 with the carrot grower himself, the CEO <laughs> of carrot.com, Trevor Mock, where we talked about things like uh, brick walls, and we talked about evergreen content, and we talked about hamster wheels, and I think there was uh, an authority uh, status thing. I can't remember what you called it, but it was an authority something or other. Mm-hmm. Uh, as well as we talked about energy audits and how to, you know, how to follow your passions because Trevor has, has done what most of us or all of us really want to do, which is, is create a lifestyle and create a career that we're passionate about. And that, like Trevor said, that you can walk away from for a month and your business sustains and maybe even grows. And that's how you define a business versus a job. And so... Yeah. I was so enlightened and we didn't have enough time to go deep on what he does best, which is, you know, SEO and rankings and leads and really building a brand that we decided to do it again. So welcome back, Trevor. I'm excited to go deep here, buddy. Jeff, man, I, I appreciate it. And, and I'm honored. I'm, I'm honored to come back a second time. And uh, it, it's something that excites me. Like we kind of had talked about on the, on the first episode. And we can talk marketing all day long and we can talk all that stuff. But I think the big thing is, which I'm excited to dive into today, is a lot of people don't predict or don't realize that the way you do your marketing directly influences the lifestyle you're able to get out of your business. And so that's what I hope that we can connect in this podcast more is showing you a different way to do marketing so it can actually lend you to having a business you actually enjoy more so. I love it. I love it. it. And and so if you missed episode 81, uh, check it out. You might even want to just stop right now, go listen to that one first, and then come back to this one uh, because it kind of builds up to what we're going to talk about today. So some of the things we're going to talk about today, we might reference something that we talked deeper about Mm -hmm. in the first episode. Uh, And and one of the things that I wanted to talk about too is before you even get into this, we were just talking offline. So again, Trevor has built this company and he kind of explains in the first episode how this came to be, you know, how through college and uh, why he became an entrepreneur, his parents were entrepreneurs and what he wanted to get out of life and how, again, following his passion, where he really truly enjoys what he was doing, what he does and how he had just gotten back from a month vacation um, before we recorded that last episode that we all dream about, but we think is just unrealistic. Right. Mm. And we were just talking off the air about that marketing piece. And when you think of carrots, what's the first thing you think about? Maybe Bugs Bunny. But other than that, you think orange, right? <laughs> and, and I was uh, able, we're, we're doing this. Most of you are probably listening. But if you want to watch this, you can see it on YouTube. Um, and Trevor's got a carrot, an orange microphone cover. He's got a carrot water bottle. He's got orange shoes on. He's got orange on his jacket. Got the shoes um, for all the video listeners right there, video watchers. Pretty aw- <laughs> I mean, but there's more to it than just that. It's not that yeah, you is. just love the color orange. So let's start there. Let's start by talking about, you know, defining your brand and defining mm. your business and what that does for you. Dude, I, I'm, I'm glad we're starting here, actually. Um, so in, in my previous companies, branding was never really something that jumped up to me as important. You know, we, we, would, we would name the company the literal thing that we were doing or selling, right? It was like uh, widget whatever company, you know, there wasn't any real branding behind it. And I'm not saying you can't do that. You know, like if you're a realtor in Roseburg, Oregon, you know, roseburgrealtor.com, that's not a bad thing. But the problem is, I think where a lot of people think that they're, that they're doing good branding is like, well you know, we are the Roseburg Realtor now. It's like, not really, because there's thousands of you. And yeah, you, you've got Roseburg Realtor, which could be good for SEO. That's not a bad thing at all, but that shouldn't be your brand. And so coming into Carrot, that was one of the things that um, in, in my transition, kind of going back to episode one that we did together, uh, where I went from running companies that did well, but kind of left me empty, that, that, that had boom and bust income cycles, you know, that you really couldn't plan on, that, that you really had to hustle every month to get those leads coming in. Uh, so you, then you'd have business the next three months. And, um, and I wrote down those five non-negotiables. And I can't remember if we talked about it in the last episode, but we did, we did, one but, of those, but recap that recap. Yeah. That. So, so, so the five non-negotiables and I suggest every agent should have their non-negotiables. Like what are the things that you will not negotiate at all in, in your business that you're growing? 
And if your business ever starts to infringe on those, you need to change the business to make sure it doesn't or get rid of the business and do something else. And for me in 2012, the businesses I had, I just felt I could not change those in the way that would actually help me do what I want to do. So I started from scratch. But one of the things was have fun. Like number one non-negotiable is I want to have fun in the darn business. And, um, and for me, that was one of my things. I said, what I want to do next, I want to create a brand that people can identify with. I want to create a brand that, that, that as soon as, you know, like when they're in our industry, as soon as they see stuff that they identify with our brand, it doesn't just look at, they don't just look at the color, they don't just look at the logo, they go, they start to feel the values of the company behind that brand. Okay. And when you guys start to think about Coca-Cola or Apple or your favorite local brand, that's whatever it is, uh, the thing that you usually think about or that you, that means most to you is not the visual thing you see. It's the feeling you get behind it. It's the, it's the way you identify with Apple that you see the person across the, across the coffee shop and you see they're working on an Apple. It's not like, Oh, they must be cool. It's like, man, they, they're, they're probably an interesting person or they, they're probably creative in some way, shape or form, or they're a little bit of a different status level potentially than someone with the other different kind of brand that's Lenovo or whatever. I'm making stuff up, right? Interesting. I don't know. It's an interesting thought process. Yeah, it, it, it is. So, so with Carrot, when, when we let into it, Jeff, I'm like, number one, um, this is about three to four years in. We said, if we're going to go after this Carrot thing, we need to like go all in on this Carrot thing. And that's when we started looking to try to buy Carrot.com. Um, which is a whole different podcast. I've literally, I've been, been interviewed on some, you know, .com like domain type of podcast on that whole process before, but it took us about three years to get that domain. Um, and we had a moment about two years ago when we were looking at making this investment, we said, how serious are we about making this a brand? If we're just making it a product, that's cool. We don't need to spend all this money to buy carrot versus on carrot.com, which is what our old domain was. But we said, how important is it, is it for us to own the brand of carrot? And we didn't, we felt we could not own the brand of carrot without also owning the domain name. And so we made that leap. We said, we're going all in on it. Like we're going to all, go all in on owning the carrot brand. And then what comes along with it? And here's a concept that I've got, Jeff, that I think would be really useful for any entrepreneur, uh, especially real estate agents is, uh, you, you've, we've all heard of retargeting on Facebook, right? Where you go to a website and you get retargeted up ads. Uh, I came up with something I call mental retargeting. And so how can you serve up enough brand impressions? Like right here, I'm drinking my carrot water bottle. We send these out to a lot of customers. Dude, I'll get your address. I'll ship you one. <laughs> um, you know, we've got t-shirts that say carrot or everything in the office is like tends to be uh, orange. The, the couch that Brady on my team is sitting on is an orange couch. <laughs> My bag has an orange stripe on it. Our team members walk around in orange stuff. Even our solo cups in the lounge are orange. And people will comment on that stuff. That aren't, your, aren't chair, even the, your chair behind cha you. Chair, chair's orange yep. for video watchers. Yep. So, yeah, got, got orange vans with carrot logo on them. Like you guys might look at it and go, well, that's kind of going overboard. Well, it's not because what we're trying to do is we're trying to bathe our community, whether it's our customers or our team members in the brand. And it's not about getting you covered in orange. It's about helping you to remind and recognize what carrot represents, which is our values, you know, which is have fun and be different gratitude for everything. Uh, we just adjusted our core values like a couple months ago. So I'm trying to condense them down. <laughs> um, always genuinely care, be a beacon of positivity and possibility. And so you can't have a great brand without the values that go behind it. And I think that's where a lot of people get, get mixed up is they think a brand is just, or, like, or the branding is going down to the, the shop to get your pens and to get the notepads and stuff like that. Okay, that's getting logos on stuff and sending it to people is what that is, right? Mm -hmm. um, what, what true branding is, is getting things that, that have your logo on them and things like that, but you need to have a feeling of value, values behind that brand that as soon as they see that thing, those feelings get elicited immediately. Yeah. And so to us, that's what mental retargeting is. You know, we, well, we bathe our, our clients in it. And every time they see the color orange or they're at the restaurant and they eat a carrot, they immediately think of us and the positivity and everything behind our brand. And let me, let me add to what you had, we had talked about before we went live, which was just that. Like when somebody's eating a salad at the local restaurant and they see the orange, what Trevor and his team have done is that they elicit that mental, that, that thought process to where people will now take a picture and say, I thought of you, post it to social media and tag them. Yep. That realtors and, and real estate professionals who are listening to this, 
that's the end goal. So if you mm. can think of a way and you're thinking, well, I can't do that. I'm, I'm with XYZ real estate company. So that's my brand, which is true. But if you can build a digital celebrity or become a local mayor to where when they go to the zoo or they go to that restaurant, it's mm. because they saw your video on the topic and they thought yeah. of you, right, Trevor? So Dude. Maybe, maybe we should continue down this path because- Dude. I, I, I love it, man. I'll, I'll go down a couple examples too, right? Because I think where people are, a lot of people are probably going is they're probably thinking of, well, you know, color, logo, stuff like that, right? And so I'll, get, I'll, I'll give a couple examples and ways that agents or investors or any entrepreneurs can do this, okay? So number one, uh, with Carrot, one of the reasons that we chose Carrot is number one, it was generic. You know, I could go into any industry. Uh, it's fun. Like you can do whatever you want to do with a vegetable, right? Like we have, we have dolls, uh, we literally sent out thousands of dolls every single year that are our, our line of carrot dolls. Um, I don't have any here in this office. Oh yeah, I do. One of them's naked because my children took the, the, the <laughs> clothes off of the carrot coach. So I'm not going to show that one, but uh, for anyone watching the actual video version of this, if not, I'll, I'll describe it audio really well for the podcast listeners. Uh, we have super carrot. Okay. So it's literally a plush carrot doll that has a, he's got eyes and a smile and he's a superhero. Like we send thousands of these out and people who do a certain amount of deals with carrot earn super, super carrot status. Okay. Uh, we have agent carrot. He's kind of like a secret agent, right? He's got the little agent badge on there. He's wearing black. He's got the black glasses. Um, you know, that's our, our, our agent carrot. Real estate agents get this carrot. We have carrot gal. We've got coach carrot. We've got farmer carrot because, because when you're doing uh, uh, evergreen marketing well, you're farming online. And so what do we do there, Jeff? Well, we took our brand, we took our mascot. You have to have some sort of a mascot. It doesn't have to be a plush doll or a carrot or an animal or something like that, but you have to have something that ideally can identify your brand. And so we'll send thousands of those, those out to customers. And here's one really cool branding tip guys and gals. If you guys take this one is most of us think about how can we, how can we give something our prospects would use, right? Like the pens, the paper, that's all great stuff. But what we had discovered, Jeff, is how can you give things to your prospects that their kids will use? How can you give things to prospects that their animals will use? Like, what does your, do your prospects care most about? Give them stuff to give to those people. Um, because as soon as we started sending out onesies to our customers who just had new babies, and we have our carrot shirts that say carrot on them with the logo, but then we found these orange onesies, carrot logo on the front, but then it has like a grammatical carrot that says baby carrot. And so then we started sending out baby carrot onesies and we were connecting with our clients at such a deep level that they're like, this is way beyond software. This is way beyond just a company that helps me get leads. They care about us at, at our core level. And it's not a strategy, dude. Like we're not doing it to go, man, I wonder what we can do to get Jonathan in this city to like love us. And we're going to manipulate it. No, we're doing it because it's part of our values. We're having fun. We genuinely care that you had a child and you bring them into the world. We want to support you in that and celebrate the heck out of it. Hmm. Um, and it's pretty darn cool if, if we can also make a connection between you, that father or mother, and your child, and they can then have a connection with you and your work. So if that kid gets the super carrot and they love packing the super carrot around, we see pictures all the time with kids packing their dolls around. And they now have some sort of a connection with their father or mother in their profession uh, when they weren't having that before. So find ways to connect your brand with a feeling, with your core values, right? Like real values you actually believe in that you want to spread to the world. And then how do you connect with people or things that they care about most? How do you define or, 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 or separate or differentiate from a strategy and a core value though? Because mm -hmm. uh, what you just described to me is, could be both um, yep. realistically. So how is it that you differentiate those two words, if you will? Yeah, that's a good question, man. So for me, and this is kind of on the spot, what's on top of my head with this answer. For me, values are at your core, whether you're in business or not, that's the way that you live life. And you want your business to, to be living those same values, okay? What, what oftentimes happens with core values, and I was very guilty of it in all my previous companies, and sometimes you even slip out of it in, in business even now, right? You're going, shoot, I need to check myself because I'm not living that value very well right now. So for me, the big mistake a lot of us make is we have one set of core values at home and one set of core values at work and they're different and sometimes they conflict. And so then you go home, you hang up your work hat and then you, now you check into your, your core value home version, right? And so here's an example. Uh, I'll see on a lot of real estate agent websites uh, where it'll show their about page and they might have their values and it's like integrity and respect and 
you know, whatever it is. Uh, we work hard and like, cool, th those are all values I agree with. I like them. But are those the values that you want to really live through both in business and in life? Um, and is there anything missing, right? Like, let's say you're, let's say you are um, a Christian and you are just someone who faith is the most important thing in the world for you. If you don't have something about that on your company core values, I think your company is not being a vehicle for you. Okay. It's just being a, it's, it's a tool. It's not a vehicle. Um, so the next thing, Jeff, is this, is I think once you have a true set of values that you truly believe in, you'll hire by them, you'll fire by them. Okay. That's, that's key. Um, strategies are what help you get your values out there to more people. Okay. So a strategy could be sending dolls out to people or uh, tennis shoes. There's one of our customers, an agent down in um, Tennessee. He was posting on Facebook that he was really overweight, uh, well over 300 pounds, and he was working out. He was starting to run. I'm like, wouldn't this be amazing? And he, posted, he was posting on Facebook all the time, right? I'm like, dude, I want to celebrate that guy. I want to I, I I give him more positivity. I know it's hard for him, but he's putting in the work. I want to celebrate him. I want to have gratitude that he's out there just, just being vulnerable. We sent him a new pair of shoes. Of course, it was orange. And of course, we had a note that came with it. And we had a super carrot that came with it. We said, man, you know, what you're doing is you're becoming a superhero. And we want to, we want to continue to, to encourage you here. And here's a pair of shoes when you wear out the ones you already use and slap these puppies on so you don't stop. How'd you know, how'd you know his shoe size? We uh, messaged him. So my, my assistant DM'd him and said, hey, you know, Brian, what's your, what's your shoe size? Didn't tell him why. And then he gets a box of shoes. Um, and uh, it was the same pair of shoes that our team, we bought our team that year at our company retreat. And what, what happens, man, is that person doesn't see it as a strategy because it wasn't. It was like, literally, we want to love on the dude. And this just is fun. That's part of our, our number one core value. Have fun and be different. No other company just sending shoes to their customers. Um, he loved it. And what does it do, dude? It bakes him so deep into our culture, so deep into why we do what we do. Dude, he, I mean, he's a huge advocate to, uh, for us today. So core values should be what you truly believe in at your core. You'll hire by them. You'll fire by them. You live them at home and in work. A strategy is how you get those values out to the world more if you truly care about those values. Hmm. It's interesting. And, and by the way, that wasn't scripted, folks. I didn't, we nope. didn't pre-talk about this. I'm just flying off the seat of my pants as Trevor talks. So that's, uh, cool. that's fascinating. So, okay. I think we, I, I think they understand now, and I'm glad we did that because I think that's uh, an underrated topic, branding mm -hmm. just in general. And I don't think enough realtors think about it. I don't think they think enough about what they could do to truly differentiate themselves to be thought about uh, when they go out in the world or when people are living their lives, when they're not even there, right? That's the yep. whole purpose of social media essentially, right? To be thought about all the time. Yep. Um, so let's, let's now, let's, let's go deep because we've already burnt 20 minutes here. Uh, talking about something important, but but nonetheless, I, I promised SEO and the whole ranking topics and cool. what Carrot does. So let's get into that. Let's get into what you do and kind of where we left off on the last one, which was, you know, kind of how you built that business and how you started doing blogging. And, you know, you were still getting traffic years later from mm -hmm. stuff that you built and kind of how that can be applicable today because the world's evolved. It's changed a little bit. Yep. Um, and so let's get into that. Dude, so I, I think it was actually a really good topic that we started in the branding because it, it translates amazingly well to, to evergreen marketing, right? Because branding is another one of those evergreen channels. The work you're doing today, it's hard work. It's not immediate, right? But as you build and build and add more little branding touches in place, it's going to serve you for months and years. And uh, so I, th I think that's the biggest mindset shift that I'd love to have agents and investors really tackle, entrepreneurs in general tackle, is, is how do I switch my mindset? from short-term hit marketing, we call it hamster wheel marketing in the last episode, right? Into building momentum long-term, we call it evergreen marketing. And so dude, as, as I was building my previous companies, and I'll just kind of recap this fast and move, in, move into applicable things people could do today, right now in this market. Um, when I was building my previous companies, I had a vision for what I wanted my company to become, right? And it, it was freedom and, and, and impact is what I really wanted. And, and going back to how I started this podcast, I, it, it took me about six years to realize that it wasn't just about more delegation. It wasn't just about better processes. Like those are all very important, right? It wasn't just about me streamlining my business more. It was about me looking at my business and going, what is causing me to be busy? And at that time, it was the fact that we were having to do onesie, twosie marketing campaigns to bring stuff in. And also we were bringing in a lot of really low quality leads. So what does that require you to do? Spend more time following up with them. 
dialing in more systems. And we had to hire people specifically to follow up with and or get on the phone with that, those leads because they're lower, lower quality, higher volume. And so we're looking at all this going, man, what would happen if we were just to like eliminate most of that? Not all of it, because it works, right? Uh, and, and you can get me more immediate results with that type of marketing. What if we could eliminate most of that, those types of leads that were lower quality, that we have to sift through 60, 70, 80 of them to get a deal or, or a customer? And what if we could just do this channel over here that takes like eight or nine or 10 leads to get a deal? Mm -hmm. And what if we could just do more of that? We could cut, we could cut some of the staff. Now we could not even have to worry about some of the, the processes because they're not applicable when we're not trying to sift through 80 leads to get, to get a good prospect out of it. Um, and we said, what happened if we go all in on that? And then we amplify it with, with the, the hamster wheel marketing instead of building our business off of hamster wheel, right? And so the content side of it, I think that's the biggest struggle a lot of people have is they go, well, number one, it takes too much time. Okay, so you do have to be patient with this. It is like stacking bricks, like building that brick wall. It's gonna be hard work. You're gonna get that first row done. You're gonna be looking at it going, my hands are dirty. I got stuff done, but I don't have a wall. I'm gonna go back over here and get in the hamster wheel because it's easier to get results. Um, but here's the structure that, that, that we discovered works amazingly well to build evergreen marketing and how to structure your website today if you're a real estate agent. Okay. So the first thing is this, most uh, websites are just simply a website. You've got your broker provided site, which is pretty much going to be a page on the broker's website and it's going to have your fancy glamour shot photo. It's going to have your, your, your picture, or I'm sorry, it's going to have your phone number and probably your email and then some sort of IDX listings below that somewhere. And if you're lucky on a broker provided side, it might have reviews on there too, okay? So that's good, that, that's like, that's the entry, okay? And, and the, only, the only value that that provides for you really is if people already know about you and they are looking for you, um, but the, the, the problem is you're not owning that presence now, you're not owning the conversation, you're working within the structure that your broker provides and you can't usually post content on there. Right? You can't usually put a blog post up there or put a video up there or show your expertise and authority other than that two sentence byline. And so what I like to tell people is yes, that will work. I mean, you can get business through that, but how many leads and deals are you losing because of underperformance on your website? Okay. So if, if you guys, if you guys are doing any level of offline marketing, uh, it all creates online demand, right? Like people pick up their cell phone. You, you send out that direct, direct mail piece. You're doing the cold calls. You're out there networking. You spoke at the rotary, you know, whatever it is. Um, uh, you're, it's going to create online demand. Even the referral that your last client, Johnny told his sister, they should work with you. They're probably going to Google you. Okay. And what happened if, if Johnny's sister also got a referral from somebody else and they have three agents they're choosing between and you have a broker provided site. This other one doesn't have a website at all. And the third one has something I'm going to introduce a concept called an authority hub. Okay. The third one has an authority hub. And so now let's go into what the next version of a website is. Okay. So now there's a lot of agents listening to this going, cool. I bagged my broker provided site a long time ago. Um, I built a custom site or I went and got a tool like Playster or one of the other tools out there that can build a, a better version of a site, right? Those are all amazing tools. The problem with most custom sites or a Playster or those other tools that they all serve an amazing purpose. They're just different. They serve, they solve a different problem than Carrot does is, is it's a better website for IDX and might have better capability to convert a visitor into a lead because the broker provided site probably isn't going to have an opt-in form on there and home value and all that kind of stuff. Um, it might have a, a better functionality for you to actually put more content on there on your about page and stuff like that. But the problem here, this Jeff is most of those websites never give you a chance to build content on them to truly build authority. You know, to have, have a series of videos that talks about the North Umpqua river and in each one of those videos, those five minute videos, uh, dives into a different reason why you might want to buy or sell in the river. It dives into things you might want to be looking at. You know, how do you get your water? Is it coming through a well? Is it coming through a water filtration system? Let me walk you through in this five minute video, the three ways you can get water if, you, if you're looking to buy a home in the North Umpqua River. And we'll walk through the, the quality differences of each and the cost of each if you need to replace it if you're buying a home. Like that's something, if I'm looking to buy that home, I'm telling you from that experience. I had to pay $9,000 to, to redo a water system uh, when we bought the home in the river. That if I would have been working with the right agent, um, you know, I probably wouldn't, I probably would have avoided that expense. Right. Okay. So you've got broker provided site, you've got normal website, which is fancy IDX is kind of usually the focus on those. 
uh, some automation, your boom town type of stuff, great tools. But then you've got the authority hub over here. And the thing that I like to tell people is this, is if someone can land on your website and you can, they can put your name or face and replace it with some other agent's name or face, and 98% of that content, 90% of the content can apply to that other agent, then you are not standing out. Okay, you are becoming one of the clutter and we're, we're more cluttered in this market than we ever have been. There's more investors now uh, than any time in the past decade. Uh, there's tons of agents because it's easier to sell houses down, commissions are high. Now there's eye buyers in the middle. And so going back to Johnny and Johnny's sister, right? If she's, if she's comparing three agents, one of them has a broker site, one of them has a placer site, and the third one has an authority hub that shows the content, the, the, the videos, the videos, the video posts, which I'll introduce here in a second. It shows a series of content on the neighborhood she's looking to, to buy in. She's gonna go, and it shows your credibility and it's positioned in the right way. She's gonna go, I'm gonna work with that person because they seem like more of an expert. They seem like more of an authority. They seem like they know what they're doing and I can trust them and I see that I can trust them before I ever even meet with them, okay? And so I wanna go back to that question again. You know, how many leads and deals are you guys okay with losing right now every single year because of underperformance? And especially agents, man, like we'll, we'll talk to a lot of them and they'll, they'll try to save 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks a month and they'll actually lose 10, 20, 30, $40,000 in commissions um, from what I call phantom expenses. It's expenses getting taken out of your bank account, right? That you don't know or, you, you don't know or, or uh, should have been your money that's not. It's the person that chose uh, agent number three with the authority hub and didn't choose you and you never even knew about it. And it just cost you a $9,000 commission. Whew. I wonder how many people think about that. Uh, not, not enough, man. And that's how I was too, because cause it's something that uh, when we really started to scale things, things up on the investor space, that's where we discovered it big time. There's a, an agent investor out of, out of um, Oklahoma. His name is Carter Steff. Uh, 1-800-2-SELL-HOMES. But he also has a brokerage with dozens and dozens and dozens of agents there. And so he had a, an amazing custom site. It looked pretty, right? That's the thing that most people look at is how pretty does it look? And does it reflect the brand? Going back to brand, does it reflect the brand that I want to put out there? But what we forget is that your clients in general, I'm saying in general, because there are, there are, there are um, uh, you know, differences. Your clients in general don't really care how pretty the site is. They don't care if it has this fancy video in the background of the, of the thing. They don't care about this. So if they care about, is it serving up what I need to make a decision to work with you? And it's usually content. And then if it has pretty stuff on there, does that pretty stuff wrap it in a, in a, in a message that shows me and builds confidence uh, in me to choose you? And so with Carter, he had the amazing $10,000 custom site. It looked beautiful. Like uh, if, if you would have asked 10 people to review his old site versus his new carrot site, all 10 probably would have said they liked the old site better. Okay. Because it looked pretty, right? Big pictures everywhere. Not a lot of text and content and all this kind of stuff. And through all of our testing, we discovered it's like, uh, you need to have as many words as you need. Uh, but not more, not no more, we no more words than you need to be able to guide them towards the, the, this, the decision you want them to make. And a lot of people send their website to their aunt Betty or their, their cousin, who's a good designer. And they say, Hey, Hey, uh, you know, Hey Sally, can you, can you look at my site and see what you think? Sally's going to come back almost every time saying there's too many words. There's not like whatever it is, but the problem is Sally's not your prospect. It's like your, your prospect has a pain or a desire. And that website should speak to their pain or desire and show why you're the best solution. Okay. So never send your website or any of your marketing materials to someone who is not your prospect yeah. or someone who's not amazing at copywriting, who knows your prospect inside and out, because they're going to look at how pretty it looks. And they're going to guide you uh, in the wrong way, nine times out of 10. And so with Carter, he did that, you know, his sister's design, Hey, beautiful site. He came over moved to carrot to an authority hub uh, versus just simply a website and we said, let's take what is great about you. Like what case studies do you have that specifically um, eliminate the objections your average client has? So this is one of the first things you guys and gals can do to start to step more and more towards an authority hub. Okay. So the first thing with an authority hub, um, Jeff, and I'm going to actually share my screen. And so anyone that's watching this on the YouTube version, uh, you guys will get a little treat. Anyone who's not watching on the YouTube version, um, I will do my best to paint the story verbally for you guys. Okay. So on, on the screen, I've got something that is essentially a drawing that shows the structure of a, an authority hub versus a website. And let okay? me just tell, let me just tell the audience, like, this is pretty, like when Trevor says he makes pretty stuff, 
This is pretty. <laughs> this is pretty, isn't it? Hand drawn, nothing but black and white. It's effective. I love it. <laughs> it's on my iPad. So I'm sure, I'm sure, guys, this is hand drawings from my iPad right here. This is special stuff. So, uh, so what you first see on, on, on this thing is you see a homepage, right? That big, that big square in the middle. Uh, right here in the middle is a homepage. And so for those of you listening in, your homepage probably consists of some good pictures. It might have some IDX on there. It's probably gonna have some links to other pages, right? So the homepage should immediately address who am I talking to? How can I help you? It shouldn't be, here's my face. I'm amazing. I don't care if you put your face up there. Okay. But people need to know how, uh, how, how can you help my problem? Okay. And if you're specifically a seller agent, you shouldn't have a bunch of buyer stuff up, up, up the top. Maybe the buyer stuff is down further, but think of what's the pain or problem or desire they have in their brain. And how can I join the conversation in their mind with the words that are on that page? Okay. And so right now things are really competitive. Things sell fast. And so what's going through their mind isn't, can my house sell fast? Usually they probably know because they're seeing them sell fast across the street. It's probably how can you help me sell it the fastest and how can you help me get the most money out of my, uh, in, into my pocket? Okay. That's what they're uh, really looking at. So up there in that top section of your website, don't just put, Hey, get your home value. Like that's good, but you need to show uh, credibility. You need to show uh, uh, case studies, even content, how to sell your house for more than your neighbors. Okay. How to sell your house today for more than your neighbors um, and faster by da, 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 and put a little testimonial there or, or a stat that says on average, you know, in, Saracosa County or whatever houses sell in 35 days with us. It's 22 days. Okay. On average, our, our clients sell for 14% more than, than other houses on the market. So if that's the conversation going to people's minds right now, adjust your copy on your homepage. Okay. Number two here, Jeff, is this. Can I, can I, say, your, can I say something on that real quick? Of course. I, yeah. I think, I think the one, another way that I'm thinking about this is that we get caught, we get so caught up in vanity. Uh, you, yep. you've been saying it like, how, is it pretty? Um, when I, when I post a video to Facebook, how many views do I get? None of that really matters at the end of the day. And that's exactly, I wanted to really say that in the most simplistic form for the audience is that that's the point here. Cause Trevor, you got my mind racing, like, yep. oh my gosh, like how many of us actually dissect what the customer wants versus what we want to see because yep. we look cool. It, it exactly because most most branding for agents is their face and name right which there's nothing wrong with that but going back to something before before we hit record you had mentioned hey i started going to t-shirts and hat and then now at events people recognize me that's part of your brand yeah. like that is part of your visual and your name uh, is, is wrapped around that so guys that could be as easy as that is that type of branding is he's hat and t-shirt and make sure that that's a part of it when you're out there in the community that's a part of your brand people recognize it and so, so with Carter Steph kind of going back to that story, once he made the switch to this structure I'm going to show you and had the right stuff on there uh, with no extra marketing, like he was doing radio, he was doing direct mail and he was doing TV at that time. And of course, just normal uh, in, in the market networking and stuff like that referrals, right? And from no extra traffic, he wasn't doing SEO, which I'll tell you guys a couple things here in a bit on that. He wasn't doing any Google pay-per-click. He wasn't driving any Facebook leads from only his existing traffic where people were going online uh, after seeing his marketing, his offline marketing, uh, his leads more than doubled. And you guys can go find the case study. Just go to carrot.com, go to the blog, look up Carter, C-A-R-T-E-R, Steph, S-T-E-P-H. He'll teach you exactly what he did. Okay, his leads more than doubled from his existing traffic source. And he added on, I think they're in the case study, he says $20,000 a month in extra revenue with no extra traffic. Like that's the key here, guys. It's not how do you get more leads? It's how do you get higher quality leads? And then how do we make the traffic that's already coming to our sites actually convert better? Okay. And so while so many agents are going out there, I, I want to get more leads. We were talking with an agent the other day who's saying, well, yeah, I could do all this work, but I can, I can go today and buy a hundred leads from Zillow for X amount. We're like you can, but like what happens when Zillow changes their business model and that's what you've invested into. And now your, you know, your, your flow of leads there is gone. And also number two is you're now at the mercy of that lead flow. I'm not saying it's not a good lead flow. Do it if it works, right? Put a good system behind it. Do it if it works. Um, but but then, then number three is like those people still, what do you think they're going to do? If they're getting contacted by multiple agents, they're going to go to Google. They're going to search your name. They're going to search the name of agent number, you know, number two who called them. And then that's where the authority hub is critical. Because even if you're going to do Zillow or even if you're going to do networking and it's all working for you, the question is how many leads and deals are you currently losing 
because when they go to search for you, all they see is a normal website, okay? And so Carter saved 20, 20K a month in extra revenue from the same traffic. So number two, after you've got your homepage and your message dialed in a little bit, and I understand y'all, I'm going over it kind of quick, and we've got a bunch of free resources. If you guys wanted to dig a bit deeper, we can get you some. But uh, next is what we call the core conversion pages, okay? And so I'm kind of like scribbling all over this thing, but the core conversion pages are really, really important. The core conversion pages are kind of like, I, I call them one time, like one time you've got to create them, and then you kind of modify them as you need to, right? You create your about page once, then you modify it as you need to. You create your reviews page, then you modify as you get new reviews. But your core conversion pages are something the effect of sell a house, buy a house, you know, do some sort of a search, you know, in that buy a house section. Uh, and then there's going to be like, uh, learn about us, uh, contact, and maybe some FAQ stuff. Okay. And one thing that we, we had realized, Jeff, is we were building out Carrot and doing tons and tons of testing through millions of leads this past uh, seven years now, is most people's uh, navigation bars is put, to be, put together all completely wrong. You know, they'll have like the top link and the left side is home, you know, and then, and then it goes into a random smattering of whatever they think or that website builder thought they should put in, but with no real strategy on what they put there or the order that it goes. And what we had discovered, Jeff, is your navigation bar should strictly be in the order of information that people need to make a decision to work with you. Mm. And so if they came, if, number one, get rid of your home link. And okay, in your website, get rid of it because people know to hit the back button or hit the logo to get to get back to your homepage. So get rid of the home link. That's a waste of space. Uh, number two, um, the very first link in your nav bar should always be the exact thing they came there for. So if you're a seller's agent, the first link in your nav bar should be your main number one offer for a seller. Get a home value or sell your house fast or get a cash offer or whatever it is. Okay. Um, your number two link. Uh, should not be buy uh, unless you're kind of, unless at least half of your business is, is uh, buyers as well. But if let's say 90% of your business is sellers, your number two link should be something about your process and how you can help sellers sell faster and for more. Okay. So it's like sell your house and you can click it and go learn more and then opt in. There should always be a call to action on them. On them. Number two, it should be, what do they need to know next to be able to work with you? Well, they probably want to know your process and how it works differently than other agents. Number three, they're like, cool, I understand their process. Their marketing methods are amazing. It, I haven't seen that on the other ones. But then they're going to go like, have other people worked with them before? Like, are they legit? So then that's where number three is like your reviews, right? And so reviews is right there in the order they need it. And they're going, cool, they, they do look like they're pretty darn legit. Um, like, who are they though? Let me go check them out. About page, like about page should be, be right there or up on your, uh, the top of it. And then number five is like, if wait, there's wait, any what, other question. What was number four again? Number four is like your about page. Okay, you know, who it. are we? Because yep, yep. uh, at that point, they, that's, they know usually, got, that's usually the first one after home. Because that goes back to the vanity of the normal agent, right? Because yeah. they're going, they're going, well, I, I need to sell me. You need to sell you after they realize that you can solve their problem. Okay. So make them, make them realize you can solve their problem first and you can solve it better than anyone else and then show the proof and then show who the heck you are. Uh, because that, that's usually number two or number three most visited web page on all of our sites, no matter where you put it up in the nav bar, is people go, can they solve my problem? How does it work? Who are they? Okay. <clears throat> and so then the last one or two may, it might be your contact page or it might be an FAQ, right? Like if you didn't answer their questions, their FAQ should answer their questions or contact. So that's the first thing. Your core pages are just there to convert, okay? They're not there to, to shower people on 8,000 extra pieces of information. One, one of the things I'll see a lot of people do is up there in their top nav, they'll put free resources and then they'll put like 8,000 links to a bunch of crap. Um, and that's great, but don't put free resources there. Put it as like a sub, you know, um, nav bar thing when you hover over uh, about or whatever, it might have a free resource thing that pops up or even better, link up free resources links all over your content as they're digging in. If they haven't converted yet, they need more information. So then link to the specific free resource that helps and don't put it in your top now because they, you do not need to take them down a rabbit hole of choosing one of 14 free guides uh, on, to make a decision. You know what, you want to take them on the very specific path. And if they're digging into your website and still haven't made a decision, that's where you then serve up at the bottom of your page or in the middle of your page content. Hey, we actually have a free resource on this thing. You're digging into our content. You therefore probably want more information before you opt in. Okay. So that's your core pages. They should be conversion pages focused and that's it. So <clears throat> number three, that alone, if you guys just, just restructure those pages, that's going to increase the performance of your site. Restructure the, the messaging, restructure those pages. 
So after you do your Zillow marketing or your direct mail or whatever, that will increase your conversion uh, rate alone. Okay. And that's all Carter did. Dude, like when, when we moved him over through our concierge program, we did all the website build for him for you know, an extra fee. Uh, that's all that he did. It was just we restructured his testimonials, his case studies, things like that. I'll give you guys a tip and then we're going to dive into uh, what content to do next. And this is where the evergreen part comes in in a big way. Okay. I'll give you guys a tip. This is going to be a big, big tip, but it's the simplest thing in the world you guys can do. So number one, a lot of agents have trouble getting testimonials and uh, because they're afraid to ask for them or they get really bad testimonials. Right. And so the first thing, you know, the first thing I want you to do is to never ask for a testimonial again. Never ask for a testimonial again. People are probably going like, well, why, why should I do that? The second you ask someone for a testimonial, they turn into testimonial mode, right? They turn, in, they turn into testimonial mode. They go, I know I need to say something nice to this person. And whatever I'm going to say is going to be very basic and generic. And it's not going to be that great to put on a website or an ad. So instead say, man, it was so fun working with you. You know, we're, we're always looking to improve what we do. And I'd really love some feedback. Would you mind if I ask you a couple of questions just so we can improve our service and, and get even better? And almost everyone's going to say yes. Okay. So they're going to say yes. You go, cool. Amazing. So as, as you, as you were working with us, you know, uh, why, I guess, why did you even, why did you even choose to work with us? First of all, uh, I know there's a lot of other agents. You probably know other ones too. Like, why'd you choose to work with us? They're going to tell their story. Okay. Dig into it more if you want to. Okay, great. Thank you for that. So was there anything as we were working together that just kind of jumped out to you that kind of bugged you that you didn't like that we can just improve the process for you next time or for other people, they're going to give you feedback take that feedback genuinely so you can go back and improve your process. Okay. That's a genuine thing. It's not a strategy. It's, I want feedback so I can improve my process, but they'll tell you some feedback and then say, awesome, uh, man, once again, it's so fun working with you. So how was the experience working with us versus what you thought it was going to be? Okay. They're going to then say something, dig into that more. They might say, man, it was so much easier. I go, have you ever sold, have you ever worked with another agent before? And I go, yeah, da, da, da. Well, well, what parts specifically were easier? Okay. Well this, like you can see what I'm doing here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm asking questions. As soon as they tell you some really, really good stuff that's really good sound bites that, that goes through their apprehensions, here's another great, really great question is, were you ever at all kind of nervous on working with us versus like choosing another agent? Like, why did you end up working with us? And then how, how is it now that we're done? Like, was that, was that feeling eliminated? Um, you know, are, are you pumped you worked with, with us versus someone else and why? They're going to tell you and you go, oh, that's such good feedback. So, you know, we were, there's a lot of agents in town. We're so passionate about what we do and we're so passionate about our mission that oftentimes people can't tell the difference between agents. And one of the things I would love to do, what you just said there is so amazing. If I could get that in front of some other sellers or other buyers, it would really help them avoid the pain of working with the wrong agent and having all the experiences you had in the last agent. Would you mind if we just like record what you just said and then I could just get that in front of people? Dude. Here's the thing. You already know what their testimonial is. So you know what to ask them again to put on video. They already rehearsed it to you. So they're not going to give you the testimonial version of themselves. They already told you and rehearsed that amazing testimonial. You ask them the same questions over in, in a different order and they're going to give you the best testimonial ever. And they're going to feel like they're serving you and, and they're serving other people like them versus mm -hmm. just giving a testimonial. So do that y'all put that on your website. That's fascinating. That's, but what about the agent who says that's too much, that's too much effort? Um, I just want to send them a link and have them go fill something out. You could totally do that. I mean, I think just like with anything, the effort that you're going to put in is, is the result that you're going to get out. So if, if you're going to put in a minimal effort, then don't complain when you get a minimum result. Uh, don't complain when another agent does that method and it takes you five minutes versus two seconds. Uh, by that five minutes, can you, can you imagine going on to the, the website now? Most agents have a smattering of a thousand testimonials or a hundred or five or 20 or whatever it is. And you, none of them jump out to you because they just list their testimonials and they think more the better. But can you imagine if you had five, I would rather, I would rather have five of the right testimonials than a hundred that are just a, a line, a, a big a wall of testimonials. Mm. And those five specifically combat the objections that your other prospects uh, feel. And then you pull out the headline like you don't just put the video there. You don't put a big old thing with five star rating. You pull out the headline in a different size text at the top that says, I chose Jennifer. Um, you know, I, I, what, what is it? So, um, you know, she sold my house twice as fast as the last agent, dot, dot, dot. And then below that, you put the full, the, full, the full thing. So what does that do? That helps to eliminate the objection of all agents are the same, okay? Or 
Um, what, what is another objection? Well, agents are paid too much, right? That's another objection. We need to have a testimonial on our website that specifically combats that with a headline that when someone's scrolling on your website jumps out to them and then that, obje that objection is squashed. So here's an example with that one. So you know, all agents or, or no, uh, uh, you know, agents aren't worth the commission, okay? Um, I, I was gonna FISBO, but um, I sold for $30,000 more than I would have made my, I sold for $30,000 more than, than I would have made my FISBO price, dot, 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 okay? And so down below, or I would have lost $30,000 by selling this myself, you know, whatever it is. And I go, oh my gosh, I'm thinking about selling it myself. I, I think agents are worthless. I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to pay a commission, which not all of us know that's not true, right? But if we have a testimonial there that says, you know what? I thought that uh, uh, paying an agent their full commission wasn't worth it. I did the research. I even paid the $200 flat fee commission. It went six months. I didn't sell it. And I signed up with Sally and Sally actually listed it for $30,000 more than I ever thought it would sell for. And it did. It sold in two days and da, 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 da. I will never think about FISBO ever again. Like that's how your testimonial should be. So don't have a big old wall. Y'all have like five or six that combat the, the common objections. That's all you need. Okay. So after your core pages there, which the testimonials page is a part of it. Next is what I call niche or location pages. These niche or location pages are, and I know we're running uh, short on time, so I'll get through this, but the niche or location pages are something you do quarterly. Okay. That's how you compete against Zillow. That's how you can out, actually outrank Zillow in their own game. The way that Zillow won was by creating a very specific page for every single little niche in the city that you can imagine. Now, the weakness in their strategy is it's all automated, right? It's all automated. So you can only automate so much. Uh, they can automate gathering data from different places, but what they cannot automate is localized, specialized knowledge in that niche. And so that's where, you know, if you're to Google a phrase like North Umpqua River Homes for Sale or farmland in Roseburg or things like that. And there's a ton of other phrases I could, I could point you out too. Those are just a couple that pop up my mind locally. You're going to find a website that's a carrot site ranked number one in Google at the top. That's either a niche location page or it's an authority content uh, piece that I'm going to tell you here in a bit. Okay. So the key is here with the niche location pages to beat Zillow. And this is the like cliff notes version of it. Okay. We have a whole content piece for free that you guys can go look at. Most location pages that you get on, on websites for agents are going to have a title of the location. It might have a little bit of content that's going to have IDX. That's never going to rank. Uh, it's, it's, you're not going to have a chance in having that rank. If someone lands in your website, that will be useful for someone that already got there, but it's never going to attract a new prospect that's searching that area. It doesn't have enough content. So ideally, we need to have somewhere between 500 and 800 words at least, sometimes even close to 1,000 words on those pages. Uh, when we were going through and deconstructing why Zillow was ranking so well, of course, they have a really big domain authority, right? They're a big website. Google loves them. So automatically, any page they launch is going to rank faster. Um, but we averaged the amount of words that they had on their pages, their automated their auto generated pages. And it's about 850 words of mm -hmm. content and about half of that, or about, about 60 to 70% of those words was repeated on every single location page that they had. Didn't matter what city. So about 30 to 40% was unique to that page. Okay. And so we said, well, if we could, if we could make our location pages more robust, have videos on them. Um, have at least 800 to 1,000 words on them, have IDX specific to that location, um, and then optimize them well. Like put, do them in a way that Google would want to see so they can tell that it's the most relevant page for that, that, that search. Could we beat Zillow? And repeatedly, we're beating Zillow right now. Now, here's the key though. You're not going to beat Zillow for Los Angeles homes for sale. Okay? At the city level, it's almost impossible. So when you're creating these niche, these niche location pages, <clears throat> if you're in you know, uh, Biloxi, uh, Mississippi, you, you need to have a, a location page that is Biloxi, Mississippi homes for sale or sell your Biloxi, Mississippi home fast or whatever it is if you're going after buyers or sellers. Um, but then don't stop there. And that's where most agents stop is they stop at the city level. Okay. Now create a whole series of those location pages for the neighborhoods you want to do business in. Okay. You know, whatever it is, uh, towns in development, homes for sale. Uh, you know, whatever it is. So go down the list. What are your niches that you want to do business in? Create location pages for those between 800 and 1,000 words, IDX on them, and every one of those should have an opt-in form for that specific location. Hey, get a daily updated list of North Umpqua River Homes for Sale. Okay, and if you guys want a good example, like I said, just Google North Umpqua River Homes for Sale, you'll find the G team somewhere in the top three. Usually it's number one, but it does kind of bounce around today. It's number one over Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com. 
Click it, and you'll see a really good example of what a good location is. Say that, say that river again. You said it fast. Yeah, North Umpqua. So U M P Q U A. You couldn't North have found you Umpqua. couldn't have found an easier word, could you? I, dude, I know I should have thought of a better one. Or just <laughs> yeah, just North U M P Q U A River Homes for Sale. If you guys can remember it, if you're driving, and check it out. Or Jeff, we can get you our template. Like it's literally a template that says, "Here's exactly how you should lay out your location pages." And link it up in the show notes. Won't even need an opt-in or anything. Um, so do those quarterly, and we suggest doing five to ten every quarter. Okay. That's how you repeatedly build out those location pages that start to get ranked and you're stacking bricks, right? That's evergreen marketing. Mm -hmm. So G team right here gets somewhere between five and eight leads a month. Now it's not a lot, but five and eight leads a month on that page. They're all high end homes. They're all people who are seriously looking to buy. And those are people who want to look at a daily updated list. You pick up the phone as soon as those leads come in, call and build a relationship. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next thing here is you, you do the five to 10 of those a quarter and how long would it take you? I mean, if you know our framework and you have an average site, it might take you a few hours. If you have a carrot site, it might take you 30 to 45 minutes if you're going to write your own content uh, or we have services that can build it all out for you. Okay. So then the last thing here is authority content and we're running up, a, uh, up on the, the wire here. So authority content, you've got your core pages, which is one time or you update those as needed. You've got your location or niche pages which is competing against Zillow and you create new ones every quarter. Okay. And now the authority content is something you do every week. And authority content is you either write articles, you know, that are unique to your area, which none of us are going to do with that, but that's what, that's what Google wants. Um, or you create videos and have those videos automatically turn into written articles for you. And so we've got a couple things that we do. We do, we do the research every single month um, on what are buyers, what are sellers searching, we do all the writing. We write about 24 articles a month, depending on the plan that you're with us. And then people can go through our automated contact, our content pack feature and schedule them up. Uh, we, we launched that feature six years ago before any other company had automated content pack library like that. Um, and so if you go in and do that, I would suggest maybe modifying that article for 10 minutes, modify it, throw, your own, throw in a picture that's unique to your area, you know, adjust 20% of the copy. If you wanted to, you don't have to, and let it launch. Way better than spending hours on an article. Or even better is this. So I would schedule one of those up per week. Or when you're out there in your niches, take out your cell phone, right? Hey, this is Trevor. I'm out here at, uh, I'm out here in Melrose, Roseburg, Oregon. And um, if you're looking to buy or sell a home here in Ro Melrose, here's the da 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 da. In this video, I'm gonna walk through the three parts of Melrose if you're looking to sell your house here or if you're looking to buy your home here or whatever prospect you're going after, right? So take out your cell phone, record a three to eight minute video every week. That's it. Just document what you're doing, okay? Uh, when you're saying, when you're, when, you're, when you're recording that video, say the words someone might type into Google, okay? If you're looking to buy farmland here in Roseburg, Oregon, I'm gonna walk you through the three areas of Melrose where farmland is most prevalent and the differences between those three areas. I've also got a video series uh, with five other videos walking through uh, horse property in this area, this type of property and this type of property and things to consider. Go check out the other series at mysite.com forward slash farm or whatever it is, right? And so you take that video and you don't have to use carrot for this, but you go submit it to rev.com. Okay. Rev.com will take all the words, yank it out. And then you take that video, put it into YouTube. You put it at the top of your blog post. You copy and paste that transcription, clean it up a little bit if you want to. Okay. And then you title it something that someone's actually going to search in Google. And the best way to do that, Jeff, and this will kind of be the last tip here. And if you have any questions, I can answer them, but I know we're up against time is the best way to title those things is to go to Google and type what your prospect might search in for that phrase. If you're, if you're a specialist in farmland in Kentucky, literally go to Google and start to type in farmland Kentucky. And then you're gonna see all these suggested searches that pop up. So farmland Kentucky price per acre is a suggestion that just popped up. Do a video on that, yeah. okay? Do a video on that and title it, Kentucky farmland price per acre, you know, dash five tips to, to determine the price of your Kentucky farmland. If you do one of those a week, y'all, if you, want to, if you want to cut the learning curve on it or cut the time, that process recording at rev.com, that's going to take you about an hour, hour and 20 minutes. Uh, we have a feature called video post that takes the process from an hour to 10 minutes. And so you essentially just upload it to YouTube and then you copy and paste your YouTube URL into our video post feature. And it makes the whole blog post for you. It sends you an email a couple hours later, says, hey, your blog post is ready. It puts your video in there, your title from your YouTube, puts the transcription in there, puts an opt-in form at the bottom, emails you, says it's ready to go. What's the accuracy on the uh, spelling and all that jazz? 
I mean, it's, it's Rev, so it's, it's the best transcription you can find. But one thing that we did, Jeff, is originally we were just sending to Rev and we would copy and paste it in there. And we would spend, we'd have to spend a little bit of time making it so it didn't sound like we were incoherent, right? <laughs> They're, they're pretty darn good. It's, I mean, you guys can find rev.com's accuracy. It's in the 90 something percent. Punctuation but, and all that stuff too. Yep, exactly. So what, what we did though to avoid, to, to avoid having to worry about that is we put the words video transcription above the content. As soon as we put the words video transcription above the content, most of the issue went away of people thinking that, hey, this person doesn't know, doesn't know how to write. Because uh, it just it's tells you, hey, I didn't attempt to write this, guys. This is just a transcription from the thing up there. The cool thing is though, Google sees all the content. And as long as your video is five minutes to eight minutes, uh, cause the average person speaks 120 to 160 words a minute. And that equals about a 500 to a thousand word article, right? You see where I'm going with this mm -hmm. is you can create content that Google loves that your prospects are absolutely, your best prospects are absolutely going to love. And if you stack one of those pieces of content every week for 52 weeks, you've got 52 new bricks, 52 new pages on your website over that year. And then you've got your location page. You did five or so a quarter, right? So you've got about 60 or 70 new pages. And it took you under 20 minutes a week. Under 20 minutes a week. And over the course of eight months, 12 months, 14 months, if you do that, dude, you are going to be swarming the internet on the organic search side of things uh, for your highest quality prospects. The people who are seeking you out where you're not having to drop an ad in front of them on Facebook. Now you can. I would retarget them back on Facebook to get them back, right? But now you're going to start attracting those people. And that's where the power comes. That's where the evergreen marketing comes is you're a year into it, two years into it. You know, you've got momentum. You're looking back going, man, I don't have to buy the Zillow leads anymore. I can if I want to, or I don't have to, you know, I don't have to go out and do all the, all the rotary talks because everyone's finding me online uh, in organic inbound search. Um, and then here's the last thing, Jeff, is I don't have to wade through 70, 80 leads to get a, a prospect to say yes. I have to wade through 10. I have to wade through 15, maybe 20 to get a prospect to say yes. Um, and so that's how you get freedom and, and impact from your business and get out of that hamster wheel mode. That that's goes back to the vanity uh, conversation too, in a way. Uh, yeah, I think you, we just think, oh, I'm going to buy them from Zillow. I'm going to get 100. 100 is, more than, is better than 10. But yep. there's quality versus quantity. And, and I think everybody knows better than that by now. Yep. Dude, this has been just, a, just, just power packed. Uh, with amazing stuff. Dude, that Google suggestion idea in and of itself. Mm. I mean, so many of us struggle with content ideas. All you got to do is say, you know, I know I want to talk about this area, this topic. I'm going to go type in those two words and see what Google suggests. Yep. You, you don't, you need a computer to tell you what to do to win. That's the reality of the world. It's we live free. In. Dude, it's free. Awesome. It's quick. Like I do. That's what I do. We have access to a bunch of fancy tools, right? That you pay a bunch of money for. Whenever I'm looking to create content, man, I go to Google and I go, number, this is what to think about. Number one, who am I being right now? Like who's my avatar that I'm trying to get in front of? Okay. You got to be very specific. Okay. It's so write down your niches. Well, I love farmland and ranch property. I love condos in this area. I like whatever to, you have to identify your niches first. Okay. Cause then that's where you're going to win. You're not going to win from, you know, um, Brentwood homes for sale. You're never going to outrank Google or outrank Zillow there, but you can for this specific neighborhood in Brentwood homes for sale with swimming pools. Uh, if that's what people are searching in Google and then create a, create a niche or location page on that, put the darn opt-in page there that, that serves them up the IDX stuff and then just do five or 10 of those a quarter and then one authority content piece a week. And like I said, it, it's work, y'all. I'll, I'll finish it with this, Jeff. Guys, it's work, okay? The, the, the choice is either we put in consistent work now over the next year, year and a half, and build momentum, then we can choose how much work we wanna put in long-term, um, or we put in consistent work over the next 10 to 20 years, forever, with no end in sight, all right? And so that, that's what you guys need to look at. Am I willing to work hard and focused now for the next 18 months, building up my evergreen machine, or am I, would I rather run the hamster wheel forever and get burnt out every six to eight months or two to three years and never see an end in sight, never see freedom in my, in my future, never see the ability to actually plan and forecast my business three, six months out because I have no clue what, what my lead flow is going to be at that point. Dude, that's incredible. It's incredible. And we went so long, my cleaning people have showed up and started uh, turning on a vacuum. So I apologize if you can hear <laughs> that in the background. Trevor, this has been amazing. Obviously, I think you just won an award for the longest uh, podcast we've ever done and, and well worthy. 
Uh, there is no time stamp that we should put on just quality content. Um, tell our audience how they can find you because I know they want more. Um, yeah, just carrot.com. You guys can check us out. We have lots of free information there or CarrotCast. Uh, CarrotCast.com. You can check us out there. I've got a podcast where we teach this kind of stuff and teach behind the scenes how to make your business better. Trevor, this has been fantastic. I think uh, if, if, if I'm an agent listening to this, not only did I gain a ton of knowledge, dude, I don't know why I wouldn't want to contact you guys and just soak up what you've given. <laughs> you don't hear this kind of expertise very often. Guys, this is brilliant. We all know we need to have a website, but we have no idea how to drive traffic. We have no idea how to optimize. We have no idea how to be, uh, when, when somebody searches carrot, guess what comes up? Carrot.com. I mean, how do you do that without being just a brilliant, absolute expert? Dude, mm. Trevor, this has been awesome, dude. I feel like we're going to have to get back together again just for the sake of we've got, I feel like we have so much more to talk about. I, I love it, man. And thank you for doing what you're doing. I mean, you're inspiring lots of people and, and I appreciate the opportunity to come on and, and hang out with you, man. I love thank it, you. man. I love it. I appreciate you, brother. We'll, uh, we'll definitely talk soon. Thank you. Lab Coat Agents Podcast.